Hello everyone, welcome to Property Zone Live again. Today we will talk a bit about our neighbor country, Thailand and particular in Bangkok. So Sawatika. So today our topic is is Bangkok a good alternative investment for Malaysian? So we are seeing Bangkok from a Malaysian perspective. Now uh, without further ado, my name is Sean Lee. Let's take a look at Bangkok. Now, let me just give you a little fact about Thailand in general and Bangkok in particular. Now, as you know, Thailand is about twice the size in terms of population compared to Malaysia. Thailand population currently is about 70 million. And in fact, close to 10 million is currently residing in Bangkok itself. So if you look at the population itself, huh, just Bangkok itself, the population is more than Hong Kong. Hong Kong, the population is 7.5 million, and Singapore has about 5.8 million. So in short, Bangkok itself, it has more people than Hong Kong as a country, or as Singapore as a country. Hi, Natalie, hey, Rainbow. So a little fact, Thai Baht has been very strong recently. If you travel to Thailand recently, Bangkok recently, you'll feel that our ringgit is very weak. We used to have one ringgit equals to 10 Thai baht. Currently, the rate currently is about one ringgit to 6.9 Thai baht. And how to do calculation? Actually, the easiest way when you go to Thailand, when you look at the price tag, it could be a bag, it could be a pair of shoes, or you look at the property. How is the better way or easiest way to calculate the price in ringgit is we use what we call 0.14 multiplier. How does it work? Let me give you an example. If you see something that is cost you 1 million Thai baht, okay? So you use the 1 million times 0.14, which is how much it will cost you in terms of ringgit. So 1 million Thai baht times 0.14 is equal to 140,000. So in general, Bangkok housing price of course, you can compare apple to apple. That means that those standard, the same standard in Bangkok and those in KL, Bangkok in general is about 1.5 and some of them could be two times of the KL prices. Okay? This is a little fact about Thailand, Bangkok, property and uh, currency in summary. So let's take a look at Thailand tourism. Okay? Now, Thailand by itself is ranked the most visited country in the year of 2017. And what would be the figures? The figures is the annual visitor has reached 38 million. 38 million is more than the, the whole population in Malaysia. 38 million was registered in terms of the annual visitor in the year of 2018. Now, the other aspect we will look at it is the foreign direct investment. We want to see in terms of people doing business worldwide, how much money is pouring into Thailand. Now, you look at the chart. This one, although it's a bit, uh, it's actually last year figures, 2018. But we'll look and if we compare to Southeast Asian countries, Thailand actually registered the highest growth in terms of foreign direct investment. In short, we call FDI. So at the top of the chart, you see Thailand, which is close to about 60 over percent year on year in, uh, change. That means it has grown 60 percent. Where does Malaysia stand? Malaysia actually registered a negative growth when uh, compared to the period first half of 2018. Uh, two weeks ago, I actually went to Bangkok and do a site visit. You now I talked to the people there, and the big thing now is they are talking about the Eastern Economic Corridor. Eastern Economic Corridor, in short, we call EEC. Basically, when you go there, you will see a foreign direct investment already there, includes Honda, Toyota, and recently, there are actually a big investment coming from Alibaba as well. Now, some of you may wonder, we know Thai, Bangkok, uh, housing price is expensive. 
if we look at the historical chart, this chart will show us starting from 2007 until 2016, how does Thailand property price fare? Now at the top, the blue color is Malaysia, and then followed by Singapore, and then followed by Indonesia. For Thailand property in this chart, they break down. They break down to landed, landed house, and also Thailand condominium. So in Thailand, basically, we'll see the price movement in the, uh, of the detached house landed, and also the condominium. So of course, come atop the chart, the blue color line registered. Malaysia property basically registered the highest growth in terms of pricing, the blue color. But if you pay close attention to Thailand, which is the purple line and the red color, you will see that there's a disparity in terms of the price movement between the condo in Thailand and also the landed house, detached house in Thailand. In summary, between the period of 2007 and 2016, Thailand condominium, the price movement actually is actually a lot more compared to the price movement of their landed house. As you can see here, the red color is actually going, the move price movement is actually quite similar to Malaysia property house. I'm talking about the Thailand condominium. Now, next. When I went to the site visit, I spent about uh, three, four days there. I visit some of the property, talk to the people there. And I, there are actually four things I like about Bangkok property. And uh, here I just want to share with you the four things that I like. First, the, for some of the property I visited, the uh, arrangement of the payment is a little bit different from Malaysia. So Malaysia, as you know, those who have bought houses, you pay the 10% down payment, and then the developer will build you, or if you take a loan, they will build your financial, which is the bank, progressively. That means if the developer has done the 10% job, then they will build 10%. If they complete another 15%, then the developer will build the 15% remaining. So it's by stages. Bangkok is a bit different. Bangkok, basically what we do from a foreign purchasing point of view is you put a 30% down payment. Then you get the, uh, all the paperwork done. And then only do, you only take the loan when it's actually near to the completion. So during under construction, there will be no more building from you until when the project is near to the completion. And one of the good things I like it is during under construction, you can actually flip. That means that it's very easy to get a consent from the developer. You can actually sell it, your unit, if there's a good offer coming in, even during under construction. So, of course, if you're talking about flipping strategy, um, this has an advantage over Malaysia property. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Abudi. Good to have you here. Second thing, minimum fees. So actually, when you buy a property in Thailand, unlike Malaysia, you, know, you know, incur disbursement, legal fees, and so on and so forth, I'll find that the, the fees incurred to buy a property in Bangkok are minimum. First of all, there's no lawyer fees. And second, there's no RBGT, which is a real property gain tax. So if you invest in a bank property, whatever money that you make, very more profit that you make, you are not subject to real property gain tax. So as a property investor, I think there's pretty good news. And when I further explore, as you know that if you're buying a condo in Malaysia, every month we are paying maintenance plus the sinking fund. The sinking fund is about 10% of the maintenance. So for example, you're paying 30 cent maintenance, the three cent you have to pay extra is 10% of the maintenance, the three cent is the sinking fund. So in total, you pay about 33 cent per square feet every month. But in Bangkok, the sinking fund you only pay one time. So I do a calculation. Uh, let's take an example. One of the property I look at, I explore at in Bangkok, the property prices in Malaysia ringgit is about 420,000. And then you pay about one time sinking fund, which is 1,950 ringgit, and that's all. So you only pay once in a lifetime sinking fund for your property, which I think is a pretty good deal. And also when you want to sell. So when you want to sell as an owner, you only incur 1% transfer fee of the price. Third, Foreigner can own the property. So a lot of people are questioning, 
because it's a foreign country, you no. Know, if you want to invest, in, do, do I have? Can I own the property wholly, or do I have to join in with the locals? So in Thailand, in Bangkok, you can own the property wholly, 100% by yourself. The only thing that uh, one of the measurement Thai government uh, is to protect our local people is for each of the building, 51% can only be sold to local, and the 49% is open up to foreigners. So in this case, 49% is under the foreign quota. So as you know, their intention basically they want to make sure that no, every each of the building they will have more local Thai people, uh, more Thai local people than foreigner to protect their local house ownership. Fourth, in general, if I do a calculation, the rental yield is about fifty percent higher than KL. So in other words, if you compare apple to apple, as you know, the condos in, 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 in KL, we are pretty much getting about 4%. So some of them are pretty good, you're getting about 4.5%. So the rental yield in Bangkok, based on the calculation, we are looking at about 5 to 6%. Of course, in prime area, you maybe can get about 6.5%. Uh, appreciation, expected ROI, annual appreciation, we are looking 5 to 6%. Okay. So four things, 30% down payment, you will only take loan when uh, near to completion. You can flip during under construction, minimum fees, no lawyer fees, no RBGT. And then one time sinking fund, 1% transfer fees when you want to sell. As a foreigner, you can own a property 100% as long as it's fall under the foreign quota. Rental yield 50% higher than KL and expected ROI is about 5 to 6% uh, annually. So, let me just put a pause here before I go further. So, if any of you are watching now, if you want to ask a certain question about Thailand, Bangkok property, or you want to share with you your thoughts, kindly type in your comment area. Okay? So, and also, we are giving out lucky prize for this week. And this week's lucky prize is actually a VR uh, glasses. Okay? So, those of you who comment, no, uh, share most, and I can ask a question there. We will pick one winner and give you out these VR glasses. Okay. Now, I told you, I share with you uh, the little facts about Bangkok and told you about some of the things uh, you need to watch out for. What are the fees incurred in property in Bangkok? But the catalyst that means that if I were to invest in Bangkok property, okay. What are the catalysts? What will be the positive factors that will help me to make money by investing in Bangkok property? So this is just my view, but I'm sharing with you. One of the important things now is there's a high potential of quantitative easing measurement. When I say quantitative easing measurement, basically we are referring to interest rate cut and also reserve ratio reduction. Why? Because Thai baht is the strongest performance Asian currency up to the date. So let me just pause a little bit. And as you know, Thailand, when it comes to Thailand, Thailand is a huge exporting country. And also Thailand is famous for its tourism. So when your country economy focus is on tourism and exporting, and if you have a very strong currency, it's actually bad for your export and it's also bad for your tourism because Thailand become very expensive for us to go. Not only Malaysian feel it, the worldwide is feeling it as well. So Thai government at the moment, they want to bring down the appreciation of the Thai baht. How they can do it, basically two things like what I share with you here is, normally what we do is as a country or as a central bank, if they want to reduce the appreciation of the currency, the fastest way to do is reduce the interest rate. Because when you reduce the interest rate, the demand for the currency will be lesser. So interest rate cut, and second is a reserve ratio reduction. Reserve ratio reduction or triple R is a technical term, but just, just let me help to summarize a bit. Let's say for example, if I were to deposit one million ringgit into a bank today, 
the bank cannot lend out the whole one million because the bank negara or central bank per se will actually put a reserve ratio. Let's say the reserve ratio is 5% today. It means that if I deposit one million to a bank, the bank must keep the 5%, which is 50,000, into the banking system. They can only lend out 950,000. So the other things to uh, the quantitative easing measurements for a bank to do is reduce the reserve ratio. That means that if the 5% is reduced to 3%, the bank no longer have to keep 50,000. They only keep 30,000 into banking system. Then they can lend out 970,000. So with multiplying effects, basically it will help to boost the economy. Okay, some of you may heard of this quantitative easing measure, but one of the example that we have is actually back to 2008. You know, 2008 in US, we have this subprime crisis. Subprime crisis basically affect US and it affect the whole world. So what the government in US did is they actually adopted quantitative easing measurement and then most of the country in the world at that time also reduced. Let's take a look at Malaysia. Malaysia at that time, the effective mortgage rate is about 6.6%. Because US it was cutting the interest rate like nobody business, Malaysia followed suit and reduced the effective mortgage rate down to about 3.65%. So property in Malaysia between the periods of 2008 and 2013 has increased a lot. And same goes to countries like Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, because it's all the impact coming from quantitative easing measurement. Third, when I actually went to the showroom, not only I see a lot of prospect buyer coming from Hong Kong, China, Singapore. In fact, in the sales gallery, they are actually local, not local, Chinese agent, I mean salesperson coming from China, based in Bangkok, to promote property to this because there's a huge demand, a huge interest buying coming from these three countries, China, Hong Kong, Singapore. So what I'm looking at the other point is that, you no, know, because when we buy this property, we can sell back to foreigner. Unlike Australia, if you buy a property in Australia, upon completion, you can only sell back to local. That means that your, your, your buyer market is limited. So I like it. You can sell to foreigner, and there's a huge buying interest coming from China, Hong Kong, and Singapore as well. Uh, these are some of the articles that you may find in Google. This is a, a South China Morning Post. You can see uh, it's stated May this year, Chinese property buyer flocked to Thailand as condominium oversupply intensified. I'm talking about the condominium oversupply is in their own countries. Huh? So China interest in Thai property is skyrocketing. Two reasons, because the price in Bangkok, even though it's more expensive than KL, but it's still cheaper than first tier or even second tier city in China. Uh, not to mention Hong Kong prices and the low taxes. Low taxes, these two, lower price, low taxes, actually move that away from traditional market. For example, Australia, Canada. As you know that as a foreigner to buy property in Australia, you have to pay additional stamp duty if you are a foreigner. So this policy come out, Thailand become a much better alternative for China, Hong Kong property buyer. Second thing, let's take a look. This is uh, actually coming out, actually one of the survey done by Juwai. Juwai is actually one of the biggest online property platform in China. In here, they come up with this article headline, Thailand is to remain the most popular among Chinese property buyers. Okay, this is the headline. Actually, there's one content in the article that caught my attention. As you can see in blue color, as you can see, last year, Thailand topped the list for most inquiries among Chinese buyer for the first time. I mean, Thailand has been popular investment destination for Chinese buyer, but they had been always ranked number six, number five. But just in the year of 2018, Thailand 
It's like having a steroid move all the way up and become the most popular, most inquiry destination for property investment for Chinese people. So you can understand the huge demand coming from there. And in fact, when I go to the shop, you'll be surprised. You go to the shop, even the shop where I look at you, they know you're not Thai people. The first thing I ask you, they talk to you in Mandarin. Okay, buying a house, most of it rely on mortgage. Let's share with you what I don't know about a mortgage. If you want to buy a house in uh, a property in Thailand, in Bangkok, what do you need to know about the mortgage there? All right. So, based on the communication with the salesperson, uh, developer staff, we understand that most foreign buyer bought with cash. Well, uh, of course, we know that they're cash. But it also gave me another confidence that, for example, if I'm buying a property, let's say one level, I have nine neighbors. Let's say one level, I have 10 units, my own units, and I have nine neighbors. If nine neighbors of mine on the same level are bought with cash, actually from an investment point of view, uh, it gives me a better comfort. It gives me a better confidence because we don't know what the market is going to turn, but I just assume that if there's a downturn in the market, people who hold cash, sorry, people who bought property with cash, they don't have the pressure of servicing the installment every month. Because when you're servicing the installment every month, it gives you the pressure. You may want to sell your unit at a lower price. But if most of my neighbors, if most of the residents in a the condo, they bought with cash, then it gives me a confidence that at least these people have a better financial standing in the downturn economy. But some of the people I know also, they are looking for loan uh, arrangement. So some of the Malaysian property buyer, they can actually arrange a loan from Singapore banks. Okay. Okay. The other thing is the interest rate. Uh, terminology they use. In Malaysia, last time we call base lending rate, BLR. Now we change for base rate, BR. In Thailand, what they use, they use MRR. Okay? MRR basically is the minimum retail rate. Their minimum retail rate is 6.87% as I checked uh, the, in the last update. And in fact, previously it was about 7.8%. Average in the year of 2017-2018 is what, average about 7.8%. Uh, the latest one is about 6.87. Of course, you take a loan. What they're using in terms of the, you can see in the loan offer is that they will use MRR minus about 2.3%. So effective mortgage rate, you use the MRR minus 2.3. Their mortgage rate is about 4.5%. Of course, this one is more, more available for the local people to buy and take a loan from their local banks. Foreigner, we are looking cash buyer or arrangement from Singapore banks. Okay, um, so basically today is sum up the summary of uh, some of uh, crucial inf uh, information that I think we need to know uh, when we want to explore the property investment opportunity in Bangkok, in Thailand. So for those of you who want to know more about Bangkok that I have not covered today, feel free to put your questions in the comments, share this out. Don't forget, we actually have a, a lucky winner today to give out. And this is a, actually a virtual reality glasses. Hi, Alia. So with this, uh, don't forget to comment, ask a question you want, share it, and uh, one lucky winner will walk away with this virtual reality glasses. So for this, I will conclude my Bangkok property session for today. Thank you very much. Hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.